Thank you guys so much for coming out today. Thank you for coming out and support me. Uh, and there's a reason why you're here, because I believe that all of us in here, we've got greatness. And I believe all of us in here have got something to help someone else in here today. I'm not talking about the people that are out there. I'm talking about the people first that are in here today. My name is Carmelita. I'm a motivational speaker. I'm a coach. I'm an author. I'm a mentor. I'm a trainer. And I am a daughter. I am a sister. I am a mother. And I am a wife. <laughs> and I'm a child of the Most High. So welcome, welcome, welcome to my launch event in the Midlands. As I said to you guys before, where this is going, where I'm going, where my business is going, uh, and the people that we're, we're getting in touch with now, uh, where we're going over the next uh, couple of, next 18 months is going to be huge. And I hope some of you will come along with me on the journey. And I hope some of you will be, will be doing, or, or, or I should say going and walking in your own journey. Because I'm going to ask you a couple of questions a bit later on, and I know some of you are going to really leave here thinking about your life. Thinking about what you're doing right now and thinking about what's working and what's not working. The presentation today is going to be entitled, Don't Change Your Destiny, Just Change Your Vision. Now there's a reason why that is for me. And, and you know, I got that name, that particular name from the Lord, uh, Don't Change Your Destiny, Change Your Vision. Because a lot of us are living and we're just existing, but we're not in destiny. And what happens is that our daily vision is blurred because of what we've been through and what we're going through right now. Who is Carmelita Nato and what do I do? Well, I'm a coach and a mentor. I help people realize their destiny. I'm a motivational speaker. I speak in seminars and events. I'm an author uh, with several upcoming books. Do you realize what I said? <laughs> upcoming books? Yeah. I've traveled to over 50 countries across the world. I've lived in over five countries. I'm a professional network marketer. Hey, any professional network marketers in the room? And you're proud. I'm a professional network marketer. I'm a daughter, sister, mother, and friend. Okay. Carmelita, I was recently quoted by Sharon Lecter, co-author of Rich Dad Poor Dad, and author of Think and Grow Rich for Women. On October the 4th in St. Louis, uh, the grandson of Napoleon Hill, Dr. J.B. Hill, quoted me in front of 20,000 people as saying, starting later or eventually is too late. There's no better time to start than the present. The most sold book in the world is A Tale of Two Cities. Most of us would know that, mm -hmm. yeah? The most sold personal development book in the world is Think and Grow Rich. They've sold over 500 million copies. Now this gentleman, let me explain to you who he is and why. Back in the 1920s, he studied the millionaires of the day. And what he did when he studied those millionaires, he put in 17 principles of what they did to become a millionaire. Back then, those people would be billionaires. Okay? So he went and studied all, the, all those men uh, and then put this principle, their principles in a book called Think and Grow Rich. He then applied the principles and he too became a millionaire. And he wrote that book. And since then, that is the most sold book in the world for personal development globally in every country in the world. And so after he died, he set up a learning, for, a learning center called the Napoleon Hill Foundation, uh, where they work with companies and businesses across the world to promote learning and personal development. And you know, I'll share with you my journey, guys, because what I want to share with you, how personal development has changed my life. And so this gentleman in the middle is Napoleon Hill's grandson. He's Dr. J.B. Hill. And he's not running the foundation. This lady here is called Sharon Lecter. Sharon Lecter, has anyone ever heard of the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Rich Dad, Poor Dad was written by Robert Kiyosaki uh, and co-written with Sharon Lecter. It's the most sold book in the world for business uh, and financial education development globally in every country in the world. Uh, so they started together, Robert Kiyosaki and Sharon Lecter, and wrote this book, and then they wrote a lot more after that and went out right across the world, made a lot of money. He comes to London quite often uh, to do seminars. I don't know what happened, but somehow this lady saw a quote that I wrote somewhere. I don't even know where. It was LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, wherever. So, this quote, she saw I wrote this quote somewhere or said it somewhere. I don't even know. And she put that quote in her brand new book, which she got permission from the Napoleon Hill Foundation <coughs> to write the book, Think and Grow Rich for Women. 
Now, this book, guys, I believe is going to be so huge because we know women are entrepreneurs. Yes, we know that. That book is going to be so huge, I believe, globally. And you know what? I'm glad that I'm going to be a part of it at the very beginning because it launched just a couple of months ago. While I was in, while I was in St. Louis, I'm uh, sorry, while I was at home watching this, this, this show uh, in St. Louis, I heard Dr. J.B. Hill speaking about people have been recognized outside of Organic World, the company I, 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 I affiliate with, um, and they have been quoted by Sharon Lecter, the co-author of Rich Dad Poor Dad. One of those people, two of those people, he said, are calling the lady's name, and he said, can you turn at all? I'm sitting there in my living room listening to this video, and I'm thinking, what? Did he just, I said, I, I mean, did he just mention my name? And then he said it another time. And then he ended with, and I want to leave you with the words of Camelita Nutter. In front of 20,000 people on the 4th of October this month, this year. I want to share that with you first because that is, it has been a journey to get to that point. But for someone like that to quote me in a book like that, I am just so on fire right now as to where I'm going. I, I want to show you the, um, the quote. But I want to ask you a couple of questions. And I want you to be, today I want us to be very, very um, real. Yeah? Very real. Very real based on where we are right now. My, the first question is, are you truly living out your destiny <clears throat> right now? Are you truly living out your destiny? And what I mean by that is, if you had a year to live, one year to live, if the doctor said to you today, you've got one year to live, what is the one thing you will do for that one year? Someone tell me. What would you do for that one year? I know it's not going to be what you're doing right now. I, I know that. I know that because I was there. I know it's not what you're doing. Because why? What you're doing right now may not leave a legacy for your children. I know. What you're doing right now may not fulfill you enough. That you can say, yes, I'm ready to go. I have done what I'm called here to do. I know, because I was there. So I'm going to ask you the question again. Are you truly living out your destiny? Right now. Next question. What if? What if you lost your job? How would you live for the next three years of your life? What if your wife loses her job? and she's a breadwinner, how would you live for the rest of your life? What if the project that you're on just decide to quit? Because it's not your project. It just decide to quit. What's gonna happen to you for the next six years of your life? Can you, can, are you, can you see very clearly what will happen? How much residual income do you have coming through your door every single month? Residual income means whether you get about a bed or not, you still pay. It doesn't require your presence. It's not there because you are there, but it's there because you have done some things in your past that has given you that residual income right now. How many of you can say that if anything were to happen to me, God forbid, and I can't work again, I got ill or whatever, that I could live for the rest of my life with the residual income that I've got coming through the door right now? Can anybody put a hand up and say that's them? then you're not living out your destiny. Because if you were, your destiny would have been fulfilling your lifestyle right now. How many of you know you don't know what your destiny is? You don't know why you're here? You know you're here, but you don't know why. And I'll talk to you about the why. You don't know what it is. What is the one thing that you would do if you had one year to live, to leave a legacy? Are you doing that right now? Maybe not. How many of you are afraid because your dream is too big? You got a big dream. Those two ladies at the back there that just came in. You got a big dream. I know you got a big dream because I saw what you did when I was at the event that I met you. You got a big dream. The problem is that most of us are afraid because our dreams are too big. And fear is what keeps us back from moving forward. We know for most of us who are in personal development, you either have a fear of success or a fear of failure. Every single one of us in this room either have a fear of success 
power of fear of failure. And I can look at you and I can tell you exactly what your fear is. Exactly what your fear is. My fear was success. Andrew's fear was failure. Because Andrew don't like to lose. <laughs> Even when we play Monopoly at home, we don't like to lose. Thieves come up the greenhouse. But I, but I had a fear of success because you know why I was afraid? Of what I would become when I become successful. That I would be different and I would be different with my family or with my friends. And I didn't want to lose that. So I had that fear of success. But also because I knew the work that was involved to become successful. You ain't just going to get it. It's just not going to come and drop on your lap. You've got to work. Some of you don't like that word. You have got to work to become successful. And I had that fear. How many of you are afraid because you don't know what your destiny is because of family, situations, past experiences, because of church, because of past failures? Because you think you don't have the right education. Or perhaps you don't think that you're good enough. How many of you have, have, have that why you don't know what your destiny is? And I've experienced all of that. And I'll explain to you why I'm saying what I'm saying. But the last thing. How many of you are living someone else's dream? Are you living some? You see, because I know some of you said to me, you're doing this, you're doing that. And I talk and I listen. I hear you, but I listen. I talk. I talk a lot, you know that, but I listen. <laughs> I listen. But I listen to some of you say, you're doing this for that one, and 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 I know you could do that for yourself. I know you can do that for yourself. I know you could do that for yourself. Whatever you're doing for someone else. But because of fear, past failures, and because you don't know your destiny, that's why you are where you are. From the age of five, all through my life, I was always a speaker. From when I was five years old, my sister dropped me off to school, and I said to her, bye! <laughs> All the other children crying, mommy, mommy, I, bye! I had, I had arrived, I know why I was there. I was there because at five years old, I knew I was poor, <clears throat> and it was poor. Because I looked and I listened. I listened to my mother saying all the other people who had money. And I knew that I didn't have money because we couldn't do the things that they were doing. So at five, I knew I was poor and I knew I was broke at five. So I made my mind up at five that I'm going to give my best and give my all because I will never be broke and I'll never be poor. That was the mindset oh, at five years, at five years old. But I was always in front of the room. I was talking and making people laugh and the teachers and everything. But how many of you know that when you were younger, saying younger in a nice way, <laughs> you knew exactly what you should be doing with your life, mm. but then life happened, yeah. and then yeah. you, you, you're thrown off course, mm. and all, all of a sudden you're doing everything else. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that cushion, that comfort, has to come from under you and just boom. Yeah. Then you realize, oh my God, this is what I should have been doing all along. And you wasted how many years? Mm. Wasted on other people. Wasted doing stuff that is not in line with your destiny. Mm -hmm. I was there. For me, it took me 10 years. When you're living out your destiny, you'll be happy. I promise you. When you're living out your destiny, you'll feel fulfilled. You will have a chance to help your family. You'll have a chance to help the nation. You'll have a chance to help the world if you're living out your destiny. The problem is that most people are living beneath <coughs> their ability because of fear and past experiences. Yeah. I promise you. And circumstances. And, well, you say circumstances, but I will show you now that there's a quote in which I use a lot, and it says, a man is not who he was born with. Mm -hmm. A man is what he makes of himself. Amen. So they can say that they're going through circumstances. And when you hear my story, circumstances, shh. <laughs> there ain't nothing like I can because. Mm -hmm. What you've got to say is I will because. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. 
So I don't believe in circumstances, and I'll, I'll share a quote with you. In fact, I'll say it right now since you're saying it. It says, circumstances doesn't make the man, yeah. it just reveals who he is to oh, himself. Yes. Circumstances doesn't make the man, it reveals who he is to himself. To what he's got inside, that is what circumstances does. So, but if you do, the magic happens. My goal today is to inspire you to live out your destiny. My goal uh, is to show you what I've done, the principles I've used to create residual income, to build three successful businesses, and live a life I could have only dreamed about when I was five years old. Are you ready? You ready? Yes. Yeah. Right. This is what I want to do. I want to help you believe in yourself more. How many of you could do it believing in yourself more? You can just, 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 just a little bit more. Yeah. You can just, just believe in yourself just, just a little bit more. Yeah. Just a little bit more. Yeah. Show you how to fight through life despite what comes your way. My goal is to help you to become bulletproof when challenges come. How many of you believe that you could become bulletproof when challenges come? Yeah. Okay. I want to show you how to ask for what you want. There's a quote that says we have not because we ask not. Talk about that. To stop living for money or tangible success only, but for purpose and for destiny. And also I want to help you to do not what is expected, but what's right. Because mm -hmm. everybody in this room who didn't put their hand up telling me that they've got in enough residual income to live on for the rest of their life, you know why? Because you're doing what is expected and not what's right for you, for you, for you. True, statistics show 95% of people never attain nor live out their God-given talents and abilities because of fear or past failures. Did I, did I not say that? Okay, most people are happily going along with life, not knowing how or why they are here. Let me share with you my story. You see what, I, what I'm doing now? But I want to start from where I was. As I said, at five years old, I knew I was broke, I knew I was poor, because we had nothing. We had very little. There were days, I remember growing up, six, seven, there was no food in the evenings. So we had to eat whatever could come by, as it were. Um, I slept on the floor. I had no <laughs> shoes to go to school. Shoes now. <laughs> And I remember my mother saying all the time while I was growing up, Camelita, look at this one. Look how they've got money. Look at this one, how they, they, you know, they, they have a big house, they just bought a new car. Look at this one, they took their education and they now become a big whatever. Look at this one, look at that one, look at this one, look at that one. That is what my mother would say to me all the time. My eyes was always on what other people, what's going on with other people. I mean, 